Hello everyone and welcome to the Sight of the Geeks console review with me John Parker and me Jack Gowling and today we have me Cody Cronotis. Great to have you with us Cody. Now today folks it's mainly Cody who's going to uh, take over in a way because we have decided to review an entirely brand new system. Now the thing is with this is whether you want to call it a review or not it's completely your choice because we have decided to look at the WITS console, uh, well a WITS console, uh, mainly the Steampunk Voyager. Now of course as you, as some of you are aware, WITS don't really do much anymore, they aren't really active and these consoles have been out for quite a few years. Therefore the word review is technically, technically not applicable but it's it's still the Think same thing right? anyway. No. Uh, no. Because that also refers to something new. But either way, it is still technically a review because we are looking and analysing and in a way we're going to say what we wish they could have done rather than what they should do. Because obviously they, they're not going to. But we can we can still say that they should have done. So just, just so you guys understand um, how it's going to play out. So, um, Cody, if you want to go ahead and summon the exterior, we can start from there. Right, guys, as you can see... On my screen, we have the Wits HUD, which mm -hmm. is an interesting design compared to what we're used to with TARDIS HUDs, because obviously the Statenheim remote is... Basic. Well, it's its own mm. design, the key and the logo. Well, that's that's even changed now, with to something minute and ridiculous. Like uh. the Star Trek um, logo, but slightly tilted. Yeah. Like, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like, you know, it's not perfectly... Makes your head go like that. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's a Star Trek logo resemblance because it's a bit more kind of bulkier than that. But the one thing I liked about, um, well, that I always enjoyed about the the Witch Hood was in the centre, that TARDIS exterior in the vortex. That was always fascinating to me. I love. I love. I love that. that. Does that actually show the actual exterior though? Um, yes. It, only when it's landed though. So if you if you click yeah. it anyway, so you can get it to so land. If I push the to summon the exterior, mm. and that will activate the screwdriver. Oh, that's pretty cool. There we go. <clears throat> and now on the HUD you can see yeah, the exterior changed. that we've just chosen. Yeah, which is also just... floating, which is very funny about all these exteriors. They always float above the, uh, the mesh floor. Um, which is weird because this exterior isn't mesh, is it? No, it's not. No, it's not. But uh, no, no, no. But the floor is mesh, so it might be that the physics has either bro has broken. It's not to do with like the height of the avatar as well, though. Yes, it made. Well, you see, if it uses physics, it would just drop onto the ground. I don't know whether it does use physics though, because it's wits. I know I've used it. Oh, not sure. Point. Actually, if you right-click Torn and have a look at the, at the edit settings. Well, no. Well, it would have changed, turned physical off right now, wouldn't it? Because it's finished landing. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> There are options there to do that, obviously, but yeah, I, um, I don't know what it does. Okay, well, either way, um, now of course, folks, as I said before, this is a review of an old system, so um, <laughs> as you can see, the exterior is definitely <coughs> not mesh, and it's no, it definitely pretty fine. However, however, I find that quite retro, if it, even though that's not an actual word. Because it reminds me of the back in the day when um, you know it used to, everything used to be prim, and mm -hmm. it's cool how they did all the designs using just basic primitives. I have to admit though, the the way you know obviously it's a original design. I like it. The little wheel, mm. the wheel on the side, yes, definitely yeah. gives that adding to um, that attention to detail. Mm. Because that could have just been a I don't know, a flat two D yeah, image. Yeah, could have been basic two D image. Yeah. But now they've gone ahead and put something in which I think's great. So. Um, back in the day, that would have been an absolute smacker. And of course, the particle effect. Oh, the, the, steam. the steam coming out on the side, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> brilliant. Is that a vet? Yeah, that's a vet, yeah. Yeah. It definitely, it's definitely designed to blend in with the environment. This this would be perfect in um, Babbage Square. Mm. It's funny you say that. When mm -hmm. there used to be witch resins, um, oh, right. I believe the one in Port Babbage had this exterior in it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I know the HOO exterior in Babbage, the one that comes out from, you know, the, the little vent on the floor, it's like a little circle, and it rises. Mm. I know that HOO did that one. Mm. Um, but yeah, 
Right, folks, so with all that in mind, um, there's not much else to talk about. Um, shall we go inside? Mm-hmm. Why, of course. Standard now there's door actually, sound. Uh, you are too far away, it says you can't go from this area. Yeah, I was going to say, there's an interesting feature with the wits, where unless you're, like, Ooh. right here, it's going to be like, oh, you can't go in. Yeah, I or remember. I just, I just got taken by the RLV system. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do, but there we go. There we go. Ah, now I do remember this bug. There was a bug with the wet system where if you click on the map and click teleport, you immediately get another map pop, 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 which I find a little bit odd. Hmm. Indeed. The sounds are brilliant. And it, yes, it, I do uh, love the sound. With the, uh, it's the Eccleston Tenant Console sound, isn't it? Um, yeah. It, it, that sound, along with the design of what I can see around me and the actual console um, itself, definitely, definitely fits perfectly. I love how said. the the scanner screen thing is uh, like every and again like like static on top of it. Static. Oh, um, what do you mean? You no, know, like the little, the little ah noise. Yes, yes on, the, on the screen. Yes, yes. Mm. You see, they definitely did put a lot of attention to detail mm. with what they did. I mean, imagine this as a mesh console. It would be nice if they were to it go back and mesh nice stuff. Mesh, yeah. But the prim, the prim details are brilliant. The textures, the textures are great. Mm. Yes, I noticed that. They've got some really good effects on there. And, <clears throat> let me just check when this was made. 2011-2010. So, was that when did they introduce material, the, the material system back then? You know, sh a specular and bump mapping. Um, I'm not well, sure. I don't think they did because this console is using the basic shine. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure then. And I've got code is mod right, so I can actually see. And now it is. It's just using the basic, um, basic shine. So they didn't have the material system back back then, or at least I think they were introducing them, because I do remember it was a later uh, project that Linden Lab implemented into Second Life. I think it was like 2012, 2013 that they implemented the material system. Uh, you got me on that one. I have to look at their YouTube channel, because that's when they did the videos about it. Mm. Mm. I was going to say, John, you're the one that would uh, that would know that. <laughs> yeah, so no point, no, point, no point asking us. Um, right, do you want to take off and we can actually look at the baby in action? Yep, so as you see guys, your takeoff lever is here. And that engages the time rotors. Oh, that's good. Look how smooth that moves. The, you know, how fluid it is. Mm. Yeah. I've always thought they moved a little too quickly. Mm. Yeah, I would yeah. agree with that. I actually found that found that speed quite nice. Actually, I mean, I mean, there's one thing well, we could add well, to that, John. The re the time rotor was always meant to represent how fast the TARDIS was going through the vortex. The faster the time rotor went, the faster the TARDIS was flying. So I'm gonna guess that the Wits consoles are powered by supersonic engines. <laughs> I suppose you could put it as that way. <laughs> put it that way, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Um, when we go so quick, we'll get a speeding ticket. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, a, a spatial By speeding the time, ticket. Please. <laughs> yeah, bad joke. Um, <laughs> one thing I want to have a look at first is uh, best thing to point out to everyone else is how big this console really is. Mm. As you can see, guys, I've I've zoomed out. Um, it is a pretty pretty big beast. Um, as you can see on the side, you've got a little door for um, for add-on rooms, which I will now go downstairs to have a look at. I always, I always preferred the, of of all the Wits consoles that I've um, seen, this one is by far my personal favourite for when I used to use it back in the day. <laughs> um, it was always a favourite console of mine. It's very I, steampunky. Yeah. Well, I, I just loved the space. I mean, yeah. It mm. is literally like a personal home. 
a personal. Um... Well, that's what the TARDIS is meant to be. Oh yeah. You've got some little kind of like corner room things to put. I don't know, like a bed or furniture or something. And then of course you've got the door for add-on rooms, um, which I'm not entirely sure how they work. Uh, Horizons. Oh right. So basically, it works the same way as HOL. I believe so, yes, but then I, I don't have any wits, wits add-ons to show you. No, that's fine. Um, I can actually pretty much... Yeah. Yeah. If you click on the um, symbol on the disc, mm. the menu is exactly the same as HOL's. So basically you put the ah. add-on room into the disc and you click on the room name and then it raises it right in, in, those ex in the exact coordinates of the door. Which is a pretty so, nice system. That is a very nice system. Mm. I've um, always liked how Who did that. Who? Uh, H yeah, H Wells did the same yeah. thing. And of course you've got the same on this side as well. Um, mm. Is there another section down below? There is. There is. And this is the, the last <laughs> the last level. Um, and it's just pretty much a space. You know, once upon a time I actually yeah, put a star down here. here. Well, I, I put a Stargate down here once before. Yeah, but you, you can't go without a bar. No, I, know. I think I That'd had a bar cool. down here once, but I don't think I have any pictures of it. <laughs> no. But yeah, um, that's how big this console is, folks. It is very, very large, and that's why it was supposed to be my personal favourite. And it's the perfect home for a millionaire Time Lord. <clears throat> yeah. Um, the the theme now that that's one thing I was going to mention next. The theme of this console resembles uh, not only a steampunk theme but also a cross between McCoy and McGann. Mm. Um, McCoy, it's kind of like the, the carpet on the on the bottom. Kind of makes me think, think of McCoy for some reason. And of course, the rest of the design, even though it's steampunk, also reminds me of um, McGann, which the rotor definitely is. Because I believe that. Actually, no, it's a bit different than McGann's. But you get what I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right, now actually seeing it in action, this is over to you. Because the way in which the WITS system works when in flight and going to land is a bit different than many others. So, all hands to you, Tony. Oh, Cody. Uh, uh, right. <clears throat> So, we have the set destination control, mm -hmm. and I believe it's bookmarks, and the only one of these that actually sort of, kind of, mostly works. Alright. That was a very long way of saying it. It's the Paradox Island one, because unfortunately the other two locations have, uh, you know, long since disappeared. Ah. Uh. So now we've set that. <clears throat> what we need to do is engage the rotor. Mm -hmm. And now occasionally, while the console is in flight, it'll give me um, errors, which are indicated by a flashing light and the text in the bottom left. And now the number again ahead. Assuming that I can find the button... <laughs> you can do that, and it avoids uh, whatever that was. So it makes for a very interesting roleplay system in terms of how oh, you actually yeah. pilot the console. Very, very. Mm. You're going to come up with another error now. Yeah, I like, I like the um, come up with time remaining. Yeah, and that's completely randomised, I believe. It can be any, anything from sort of a minute to, I think, the highest I've ever seen is... Four. Four. Five minutes. Okay. Four minutes. That is pretty cool. Although, I mean... Oh, time drift. There we go. Awesome. Um, what was I going to say then? Oh. That's awesome. That I like. Yeah, that is a nice effect with the power drain and the blinking lights. I believe they've got an autopilot feature as well. So if you they, just uh, select that, it, they... it would do it by itself. Yeah. There's hmm. also 
a voice activated system where you type commands to the console and the console will then do what you've told it to do. Oh. Well, no, you see, that's funny because the Saturday Geeks console was going to have that feature, but I scrapped it. Why? Oh, uh, it just didn't work the way I wanted it to work. Oh. But that could be an idea for a future. Evasive maneuvers. Hmm. Now, let's scoop the object. So you see the pop up here saying Cybercube. Yep. I have just received that from the Time Vortex. Really? I've never... Yes. I've never had that before. What is it? Um... When you use the scoop, it will randomly take an object from a server and give you the object and say, say something clever. For, for example, this said, some device used by the Cybermen. And there's another one. See, yeah. we got a piece of the moon. Okay. I've never actually had that before. I mean, there's some interesting stuff that you can get. I mean, think, I think before I've had a piece of Scaro and a piece of Gallifrey. Are they actual objects as well? Like, is there... Yes. ...actual designed, textured objects? Yeah. So, like... It gives you little things to, um... You know, you could res them, res them in the console room and have, like, a museum. Well, that's what I was thinking, like, downstairs in the spatial areas where there's nothing. You could put, like, a museum piece and set it all up, which I think is brilliant. A brilliant idea. So, that feature in itself is great. Yeah. Um, we've landed, I believe we? we have just landed. Mm -hmm. But this is actually on Paradox Island, and it's in the sky. Just... In Oh, right. Because the the place of landing has moved oh, since it was so, set up. Uh, so if we want to go outside, we're temporarily going to drop out the sky. Um, now, I can't remember for the life of me, but if you were to do like a manual location on a Ritz, does it actually res the um, exterior around you when you exit? Yes, except in this case, because the landing point is just off the ground, it'll wait until I've hit the ground, and then it will summon, it will summon the exterior. Right. Yeah. Damn it. Okay. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty awesome. I like that. Um. Now, of course, as I can see in the corner here, it's got a uh, rift energy meter. So I imagine you're used to power up at a rift point. Is that right? Uh, yes, I do believe there used to be rift points anyway. I can't remember if they ever worked properly. Uh, most likely they probably didn't, and the one definitely now. Um, now, what else do I remember from this? Oh yeah, um, I also remember that you could export and import bookmarks. Um, yes, I believe you can. I think that's the bookmarks button. Yeah, that says delete, rearrange, backup, rename, cancel, and add image. Now, that idea, I wouldn't mind having in ours, John. What's that? Um, like, you know where it's got bookmarks on the side? Where I'm standing? Oh, sorry. i got to find it. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> did eventually. You click on that and you can add, you can rename, you can delete, you can back up. Your bookmarks. Mm. So that'd be a good idea for ours, I think. So is that just like landmarks? Yeah, that's landmarks. You choose where you want to go. So you, you put your landmarks in there. Uh, I'm not sure if I it's. So. I'm yeah. not sure if it's landmarks. I think there's an option on the HUD. Oh yeah, of course I remember. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the green button. And then it says create new landmark or bookmark. Yes, I remember. Click on that. <clears throat> and then we name it. Let's name it uh, Silly Place to Land because it'll <laughs> land right where we're stood. Yeah. Submit. <clears throat> Would you like a picture? You can say yes or no, but I don't have a UUID copied and pasted. Mm -hmm. So let's just say no. So it says adding Silly Place to Land to the database. I'm, I'm slightly annoyed that they haven't got the capitalization correct. <laughs> That's my OCD kicking in. Um, to the database. 
Yes. That doesn't. Well, that's not their internal database, is it? No, that's my personal. Your personal data. Yeah. Okay. That that's just fine. goes on for the HUD. And now I believe if we take off, it should let's just set destination at silly place to land. Brilliant. Which is I like perfect that. time to show the voice activation system. So this is the voice activation system, and you type help, yeah, and it will give you a list of things you can say. So if I do slash mm -hmm. autopilot, the TARDIS will now activate, and it will fly itself to a silly place to land. And of course, the exterior won't show up until we step out the door. Obviously, yep. Well, you have to step out the door first, don't you? Yeah, ah, you, yes. you will have to, that's, yeah. Because um, that's one thing about which, yeah. Yeah, that will say, the Time Lord must go and check things out first. <laughs> which is quite uh, humorous, in a way. Which is basically a way for them to say, look, okay, if a companion is at the doors, the TARDIS exterior won't res. So... We which should have that on our really console. Uh, yes, should. we should. Actually, it should be a thing with all of them because um, NLS and HRO don't do this, and it is very annoying. Neither do Navitech. Well, yeah, and it's very annoying when someone goes out and they're like, "Well, where's the exterior?" Well, I've got to get out first, so you know, and you've got to tell everyone to stay where they are and wait for me to say for you to come out, so I can let the exterior land first. You know, um, one thing I don't know if they do have, they give you the choice to change the time of landing. Um, you mean the um, estimated time remaining? Yeah. Um, no, I don't believe they do. There is, oh. however, a quick land option where it will basically land. set 10 seconds. Now, I've used that before. I don't know if it's emergency land or emergency brakes, but when I chose to do that, when I chose destination, the TARDIS actually. Um, landed in a in a random region. The true this true story. This actually d did happen. It was completely random. I looked where the exterior was. There was no reservoir box. There was no nothing. It literally randomly landed. Fortunately, in a place where um, object entry was allowed, which I thought was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I, think, I think I've seen that happen. I think you have to press the emergency brakes for that to happen. But either way, don't do it yet. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll tr we'll try it after it's yeah, um, yeah. after it's landed, and then I've taken off again. Was it emergency land or emergency? I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure it's emergency brakes. But I just thought I that was awesome. I think the emergency brakes are part of the role play system, so it won't actually do anything. Right. Uh, darn. <clears throat> but emergency land, I believe, is what you're thinking of. That's what the brakes do. It will what? say entry speed too fast, apply brakes, and then it'll put the brake, it'll push the brake pedal to slow down the um. Oh, slow. So, uh... Here we go. And now we technically should be landed in a silly place to land, but obviously as we haven't gone outside, there's no exterior. So if you step out? If I do that, it's going to confuse the TARDIS. Well, <laughs> can I try new things once? And we're actually going to see the interesting roleplay feature. Or not? Oh. oh, there we go. Now it does the interesting thing. Oh, that is cool. The reason it has done that is because the exterior is in the interior and the TARDIS knows that, uh, it. Mm. you know, that shouldn't that, be a thing. That, that can't happen. That doesn't make sense. What isn't... But that... it is happening. Oh, and that uh, is why uh, it is a paradox. Oh, I thought you were talking about, yeah. Um, Which I believe is similar. 
Um, you you don't. You just tell it to take off and everything's fine. I believe it's similar to what NLS does, except NLS does it with other exteriors, not your own, which isn't technically accurate. No, it doesn't. That's backwards. Right, so that again. So, what do, what do NLS do? When someone else lands an exterior in your console, that's when the cloister bell goes off and it does all the fancy, oh no, paradox detected stuff. But it doesn't really say that, it just sets the cloister bell off. Whereas this one only does it for your exterior. Anyone else's, I believe sense. it ignores. I didn't realise, um, unless it does that. Um, yeah. It's always done it, I believe. Alright. Um, okay. So, now, let's... If you were to select the silly place to land location again. The silly place to land. Right. But... Uh, silly place to... Okay. Silly place to land. And if you now choose... Uh, I'm not sure if I have to set it in flight or just pull the emergency land lever. Pull the emergency land lever, if it happens. Cannot perform right. So if I try the emergency brakes. And then that. Oh. Ooh. Ah. There we go. Oh, so if you used to go out now. Would well, you let's see if we can turn the sim scanner on and see where we are. Japan Dream. It says it's unknown, which usually means it's a region that no longer exists. Hang on. Um, so, if you open the doors anyway, let's have a look, because I'm pretty sure that name rings a bell. I'm almost, and it's basically just going to say uh, no. Yeah, no, there is no sim by that name on the grid. Ah. Now, you know what's interesting? What? That... That name, uh, what was it? Japan, Japan Dream, Kenjin, right? That was where I ended up. So that tells me that that wasn't a random location. That was pre-programmed. Hmm. There's probably a random list of locations. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say because there's no way you can get a list of Ritsims, or at least I don't think there is. Not an easy way, anyway. In scripting, so I'm guessing they just had a huge list of random regions they just, they picked that had object enabled. Okay, so if you were to do it again, do you think it would Logically, choose a different one? Logically, it should do another one, unless they yeah. only had one. But I don't think they would do that. No, there's multiple, John. Because if you remember when we were messing with this before, we ended up in a sim that was called Katrina, but mm. it wasn't the Katrina sim anyone would be thinking of because that's been gone for a very long time. <laughs> Right, so let's do an emergency lamp. Oh, I'm being moved about. Ah, Azure Cove. It says that's up. So I do love the random effects that the TARDIS does, where it will push you when there's all the sparks and stuff. Oh boy, let's hope this doesn't land us in someone's home. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's an, it's an adult region and there's two people outside. <laughs> oh, they're not outside now, they're just they're miles away. <laughs> Let's go have a look. I've just fallen out of the sky, I'm in the corner of the sim, we're all gonna oh. die, there's nothing fun here. <sighs> oh, that is really funny. Okay, um, hang on, I'll send you a... Is that just thing. now public access land? I believe so, which yeah. is, again, is again an example of how old the system is. In fact, this was probably somewhere of... Right. Probably somewhere so, where it was. It was probably somewhere where there was uh, Doctor Who based stuff. Yeah. Azure oh no, it was Azure Cove. I remember Azure Cove. That name rings a bell. I'm pretty sure it was right. Doctor Who, a uh, Doctor Who region. I imagine so, otherwise I doubt it would have been in the, um, the run list. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, besides all that, um, what have they got here? They've got external comms, so you can talk outside. Um, exterior shields, how effective were they? I honestly can't remember. There's only one way to find out. 
only one way to find out. In fact, now is a good time to showcase how you set an exterior. So, oh, um, yeah. the blue button. Mm -hmm. And you have a list of options. Had stealth, shields, alarm, exterior, delete, RLV, snap, cam warp, and setup. Click on setup. And then you've got set console and set form. Mm -hmm. Set console is rather quite self-explanatory. And set form will give you a list of anything you can disguise as. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pick the clock because, you know, that's my favorite. And we shall summon it like this. And also, you doing that, I've just remembered. You can, um, is it the snap button? You can take the coordinates from the landed exterior and actually put it into a bookmark. What, with the snap button? Surely that's just a finger snap and the door opens. Oh. Yeah. Damn it. I could have sworn that you could take um, the coordinates of the exterior that's been landed and... Oh no, yeah, if you click on the bookmarks... Oh, that's, uh, pre oh, that's pretty cool. The gr green button? Uh, mm, no, um, if you click on the bookmarks uh, console button. Ah, right. Um, add current. Add current. Add current. And then you can put it in there. Um, you know the shield? I park here now. It's a bit defective. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it se seems to be phantom. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not entirely sure what went wrong there. It's, it's like someone's blown it's a bubble because, around. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks just like a bubble. <laughs> see if I see if it works if I turn on by the HUD shield. Oh. oh! Oh, that, that actually made the console button click. Oh, that's... Oh, that's cool. Oh, oh now it does something. That's why the fan... Oh, okay, right, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, Do you know that reminds me of John? Hmm? That reminds me of the shield that you showed me for your TARDIS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It fired you across the region. <laughs> yeah. Actually... <laughs> does, Boing! Does this also go for, um... Objects as well, or does it just repel? Hang on, I'll go, I'll go test this. That's a good question, actually. Objects incoming. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Object physical. Here it goes. Oh, oh. Oh my! Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Well, you'll you'll find that when you least expect it. Yeah, I think we will. Uh, right. Okay. Let's turn the sh off. Yeah, because I'm bouncing around the place. I love how that interacts with the in console. Jack, see if it's been returned here. Um. Uh, March 14th. No, no, I haven't. I haven't received It'll it back. Turn up. Yeah. Um. Right. So. Uh. What else besides that? Um. I'm. That's pretty much sure it. Much else? Because I mean, most of the buttons are related to the role play in flight system, mm -hmm. and without making it go in flight hundreds and hundreds of times, you can't show each of them in use. Evasive maneuvers. But yeah. Um. Other than that, I'd say that overall. It's a very decent console and a very decent system um, at that as well. Mm. I very Get much it. like the Wits. They're the always my favourite. Um, well, well, this console in particular is always my favourite. Um, shall we give verdicts, John? Um, Do you think it's worth doing yeah, verdicts? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's give the verdicts as, as we would normally give them, but they technically take absolute no effect because... This system won't be updated again, I, yeah. or at least I don't think it will be, so okay. let's just have a reminiscent uh, okay. verdict. So, we'll start with you, John. Um, the exterior, what would you give it? Okay, completely disregarding mesh, because of course back then they didn't have it. Um, for the design-wise, and, and you know, how it looks, um, I'll go for an 8. An 8? Okay. Now for the interior... Right, bearing in mind 
everything, system mm-hmm. included. Yeah. What would you yeah. give it? Um. A ten. A ten. Okay. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Nice and bold. Okay, Cody. What would you give the exterior? Honestly, when you take into account the age of the system, mm-hmm. I really think it stood the test of time, and the build is quite nice in terms of the exterior, so um, I'll give it a 9. 9, Bill. And for the interior? The interior, the same same point about the age of the system and the fact mm-hmm. that it does still work, and it stood the test of time. Mm-hmm, it has done. And actually, I've I've got such a soft spot for this design because <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a favourite of mine. So I'm gonna have to say a ten because ten is brilliant. I can't fault it honestly. Fantastic. Mm. Um, for me, I'd give the exterior uh, an eight point five. Brilliant design. Um, actually, you know what? No, 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 no. that's that's completely. Uh, uh, um, yeah, I'll give it an. Um, yeah, I'll give the exterior a 9.5. A 9.5 for me. Uh, for the interior, I will also give a 9.5. A 9.5 only because there's a few things they could have added. It's not exactly a big deal, but I mean, like, for example, the choice to uh, um, shorten down the time of in-flight. Rather than, obviously, having to use the emergency land and whatever. You know, having a choice of how long, or setting a delay. That would have been good. Um, but no, well, other than that... 9.5 above because like you said the design I absolutely adore the system itself I absolutely adore um, and obviously back then it, it kind of goes to the argument of um, old things are always the more durable than the new things mm. it goes the same for consoles as well especially no, I, just, I just I just love how this is all prim and yet it looks like it would be perfect as uh, as mesh. Oh yeah, I mean I I can see I can see this in mesh. Oh yeah, I can definitely see this as a mesh form. Definitely. Mm. So would be nice. folks, that is our um what would I, call it? I wouldn't say re- review, I don't, well, you could say review, but our personal opinions <laughs> on um, the Wits Steampunk Voyager. So, we do hope you've enjoyed. Um, mm-hmm. John, Cody, anything you want to add? Or no? Um, oh, yes. Uh, guys, you probably wondered why Cody has been showing up a lot in our videos. Ah, yes, yep, yep. yep. And, Go on, John. Uh, it's because, technically, because he's such a, <laughs> a nice guest to have on, and I know him quite well in Second Life. That uh, we brought him as a junior member of the Saturday Geeks, kind of like in training, isn't that right, Jack? Yeah, yeah, that I agree with. So we have uh, what is it? I mean, we were talking about this yesterday, weren't we? I was trying to think of a mm. name for you. I did call you an apprentice, Cody. I did call you an apprentice, <laughs> a Saturday Geeks <laughs> apprentice. But no, that's um, that's a bit lower actually. There's, there's, there's there is a word there, but I can't I can't find it for the life of me. Um, what is it? Not not a trainee. So to speak, like a. Uh, it's not to really train. <laughs> you're kind of like a temporary, uh, not temporary, but kind of like a, um, a member who, now and again, like like, um, it's like your second job. It just in a helps way. out. Yeah. Uh, uh, effectively, assistant, but. As- yeah, there, yeah. There you go, assistant, assistant. Yeah. Assistant who comes in every now and again, but officially a member still. Hmm. So. Yeah, there you go. That's your definition. You That's your definition, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks, we do hope you enjoyed. And, of course, thank you, Cody, for joining us once again. Absolutely brilliant. And you guys will see us in the next video. So, until next time, then. take care. See, see you next. soon. And remember... Let your geeks out, guys. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. That is all we have for today, folks. Join us again next week on another Saturday Geeks video to find out what adventure we embark on next. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like and comment on the video below. Remember to subscribe so you can keep up to date with our latest videos. Till next time. Take care, stay safe, and remember... Let, let your, your geeks, geeks slide out. out. Toodle pip. Toodle pip.